When working in game engines, they have some tools that allow you to blend objects nicely between each other and make a more cohesive scene. But with DCC applications, this hasn't always been something that's been super easy to achieve. And a lot of times you get these hard edges between objects that doesn't look very nice or very cohesive. But with Houdini 18.5, along with the combination of Redshift, we can generate some nice blends between materials and objects to create something that looks like this and is a lot more cohesive and looks more like a one scene or one objects in an actual believable scene. So this is what we're going to take a look at today and show you how to achieve. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And actually before we do that, it is important to note that all of these assets that you see here, so the grass, the rock, as well as the ground texture is all available for free through Megascans. They're all Megascans free assets. So you can download them and follow along if you would like. So first off, I'm just going to disable all of these objects and go into our geometry here, or our setup and jump on in. So if I frame this up, this is our height field. This is what we start off with. Just generate the ground, just added some noise there, super simple. And then I went and converted it to uh, geometry. And then I just made it a lot smaller so that it, the scene isn't huge. And then the file node here is gonna be our rock asset. So I'll frame that up as well. It comes in rather large. So I also made that a lot smaller just to make it blend into our scene. And then from there, I brought it into this group, which isn't necessary at all. I went through some testing and that's just kind of a leftover node, so you can ignore that. But I went and merged our terrain here with our rock into this merge node. And then from there, I sent that into a mask by feature node. And if you wanna see the mask, you need to select your node as well as go up to this icon right here and click it. If this is already enabled and you still can't see your mask, you can just go up to this mouse icon and then back to this and then you can see it. So this first mask I have set to just be called mask. You can name it whatever you want, but I have everything disabled except for ambient occlusion. And I upped the blurring iterations because I wanted to be this to be rather blurry. So what we're achieving with this mask first off is we want to raise the geometry below this. So on our actual landscape, we want to raise the geometry just a little bit to make it a little bit nicer of a blend between the two objects. So we want it to actually raise up into our object just a little bit and have a nice little fall off there. So that's why it's got this blurring iteration up pretty high, as well as I've also remapped it from one to zero because normally if i just enable this you can see normally these are from zero to one which is not what i was looking for for this because i just want to affect what's underneath here and if i actually go and click on this attribute copy and set the display flag and then click back on this mask by feature you can see our mask right here so this is the mask that we're creating just to affect the geometry of our actual um, landscape. That's why I have the landscape piped into the first input here because this is the attribute um, we want to be copied onto. So we want our mask here to be copied onto the landscape specifically. So that's why that's in the first input. And the reason that we're using this attribute copy node is because for whatever reason, Redshift doesn't like the attributes from the mask by feature node. So if I go up to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that I actually have a mask here in our, um, and just set the display tag just to make sure, but I actually have the mask here in our geometry already. And so when I click on this attribute copy, you can see some of those go away, but this mask stays there. It's the exact same thing. It's just, I guess, reinforced that it's an actual attribute 
that Redshift can use. For whatever reason, like I said, Redshift can't use them straight out of this mask by feature, or at least I couldn't get them to work. So that's why this attribute copy is here so that we can have our Redshift be able to use those attributes. So all you do is just plug in the attribute name here, and if you wanna rename it, you can give it a new name here as well, but I'm just gonna leave it for mask for right now. And then I have this piped into a merge node, which is brought back into our mask by feature. And if I go back to our scene view here, you can see if I go back and enable our mask. So this one is the opposite. So we kept this zero to one range because we want to basically generate our opacity blend here. So I've actually set the name to be opacity blend for this mask because this is what's going to actually drive the mask of our geometry inside of redshift. So our, our our opacity, I should say, of our plane here in redshift. So basically from about here to where it ends, that's where this mask is coming into effect. So I, again, just have some pretty basic settings here. I've upped the bias a little bit. I think I upped the blurring iterations a little bit. Maybe that's default. Um, looks like it's changed a little bit. And then our ray offset, I've cranked this up a little bit just to make our blend a little bit tighter. You can play with these settings as you go and they, you can get some different effects. So this will be, this is going to be used probably as I crank this up to just tighten up your mask a little bit and make the, the fine tune tweaking that you need to get the look that you, you desire. Um, we want this to this max to be right at the edge of our geometry here so pretty close you see here so if i go back and forth between the two pretty close to the edge of where our rocks lie because we want it to actually go over just a little bit from where our our rocks are at and that's going to be achieved here in the next couple of nodes by say go over that's because in this point vop we're actually raising the geometry a little bit Oops. we're raising the geometry just a little bit like i said earlier to get the nicer blend between the two uh, geometries so if i jump in here we achieve this through just a point vop into a displace along normal and then we have this mask attribute that we created right here or i should say right here we have that mask being pulled into our point vop through this so if you want to bring that in you can just type in attribute and then it's uh or sorry it should be like import import point attribute and it's the second option and then you can set this to a float because if I go back to our sp uh, geometry spreadsheet you can see that our mask is a float value and that's what we want. So we wanna to go to our first input as well and then just bring in the specific attribute that we're looking for, which is called mask, which is all that I've done here. You can see it's the exact same thing that we just set up right there. And then we're gonna multiply that by a constant so that we can control how much we are displacing our geometry. So if I crank this up, you can see it's a lot harder. We don't really want a super hard, uh, like, uh, raise here we, we just want it to be a nice soft blend just raise a little bit so that it doesn't come over our geometry too much it just brings it up just a little bit and makes a, a nicer blend between the two and then you pipe that into the amount and then out into our output so from there and actually i should have done this differently this material is um Actually, I don't think it's being used right here. I'm basically using this material as an out node, so I should have made this a null and called that material out, or um, sorry, our geometry out for our, our landscape. But uh, this rock up here is actually being textured through this material right here, which is just fine. Uh, you could do this differently in multiple different ways, but I just, chose to texture it through here, uh, which is fine for the setup. So from there, 
I bring everything into a couple different nodes here. So the big thing here that we want to look at, this rock just basically has the object brought in here so that I can enable it and disable it whenever I want. And then the grass is set up through there. We're not going to go over through the scattering of that. We're going to go through just this ground node because this is kind of a big deal right here. So I've just brought in the, like I said, I was using that material node as an out node and then I'm re I'm retexturing it in here, actually overriding those materials. You can also texture stuff through the geometry node. So if you go into your render, you can set the material here, but any sort of materials that you set inside the node will actually overwrite those. So as well as anything downstream is going to overwrite anything upstream. So in here, I have, like I said, just the, the ground plane brought in. And then I have it textured with our opacity and into a merge node. And the reason I have it into a merge node in this second tree right here is because we want to have our a, a second plane, basically our second ground plane to be just below where our first one is. So you can see that we have lowered this just a bit. I go back and forth between the two. We've lowered it just a bit. And the reason that we're doing that is because without that, we will get some bleed from the outside of our um, scene. So I'm actually going to go off screen and enable my render view. And then I'm gonna switch scenes here so you can see. So if I go through, look through our camera here, and then I'm just gonna lock our camera to our viewport so we can see. So if I just have this enabled, if I go through back and enable our merge node here and let it repopulate into our scene and I actually get rid of this connection here, you're gonna see that once it updates here, you're gonna have this sort of a black line going around our geometry here. And as I rotate around and look, as it starts to clean up, you can see from certain angles, specifically lower angles, you can see that we have this hard black edge going around our geometry that doesn't look very good. And that's because this uh, first ground plane that we have has an opacity map on it that is uh, basically blending the edge out here. So it's taking the background of our scene, which just so happens to be black. If you had uh, a dome light in here and you were using that as like a skybox or something, then you'd get some bleed from that. And we don't want that. So that's why we have this secondary node here that's actually bringing in a second um, ground plane that just has the same exact same material on it without any opacity on it. And you can see as soon as I wired that up and it refreshes that it gets rid of that hard black edge along our object, which is what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna go ahead, disable that for now and switch back to our other scene so we can go over the texture here. So I'm gonna go back into our material context and these materials aren't too, uh, aren't too different. They're just uh, basic setups. The one we wanna focus on is our ground material here. So the texture I'm using is a, actually a gray texture. So that's why there's these color corrections. I was playing around with some different color corrections to make everything blend a little bit better. And uh, this is what I settled on. So um, pretty basic setup other than the node down here as well as this color correct. Um, just roughness piped into roughness, a normal into a bump and into the normal. But this right here is the big thing. This is where we're getting our mask into our into Redshift. So this, if you want to do this is a uh, attribute, a RS point attribute. So we can just drop one of those in and then you just input the name of the mask that, or the attribute that you're wanting to use, which in our case is our opacity blend uh, mask that we created back in, if I jump back to object context, that is this mask that we created right here. Like I said earlier, we set this to the opacity blend. That's because we want to use that as our opacity blend in our actual texture. And that's basically what's driving all of this nice blend that we got going on in our texture. And like I said earlier, for whatever reason, if you try to use these with the 
just the mask by feature node. For some reason, it doesn't want to work in Redshift. That's why we have that uh, attribute copy node in there. So pretty super useful to create um, any environments, nice blends between objects. Don't have those hard edges. Uh, it is completely procedural the way this is working. So if you want to actually go back and add more uh, of like these rocks or something, you can add multiple things in there. You just want to start with a merge like we had here, um, but you would want to merge before that. So if we wanted to put a sphere or something in here or whatever, you know, whatever geometry we wanted, uh, you would merge that and then you'd send that into this merge node and then through our mask by feature and into this merge node down here and uh, get what you're looking for. So it's the mask by feature basically is just driving everything. Uh, it creates all of the maps that you need and uh, will work with any sort of any any number of, of objects as well. So like I said, completely procedural, um, super easy to edit and change later and very useful for creating environments. So hopefully this helped you out and maybe you learned something. Uh, hopefully this attribute copy thing was um, not stumping too many people, but if it was stumping you and you didn't know how to get your attributes into Redshift, then this is how you go about doing that. So anyways, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments and make sure you guys check out some of the other videos on my channel. I have a lot of Houdini tutorials as well as some stuff on Cinema 4D and Redshift as well as a bunch more videos coming. I also have a website if you want to check that out. I'm offering some free stuff. I got some more stuff that I got planned uh, that is free as well as paid. If you guys want to help support me in creating these videos, you can do that through my website as well as subscribing because I believe something like 93% of people aren't subscribed to me that watch my videos. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And like I said, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave those in the, co in the comments and I will get to those and try to answer them as I have time. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.